Welcome to the Fanalyst YouTube channel. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick and at Five Reasons Sports. Make sure you check out the other interviews on the channel. I think this is actually the 10th one that we've conducted. Also, check out Fanalyst US on Twitter and on Instagram. We're going to have a lot of news for you soon. By the time you hear this, you might have heard the news about all the products that we're going to be releasing for Fanalysts and for those who follow them. But today, I'm going to be talking to somebody I talk to pretty much every day. So this should be a re relatively easy interview, maybe compared to some of the others. He's Alejandro Viegos. You can follow him at Alejandro VG32. You can see his setup. He's got Five Reasons Sports Network in the background. He runs our YouTube channel, but that's not all that he does. So we want to talk about some of the other things today. We've tried with these interviews to kind of introduce you to different uh, areas of the business, different backgrounds for different people. And and this is a little bit different than any of the others because Alejandro does this in two languages and into two very different audiences. So we're going to start here with kind of the Spanish side okay, and how you got involved in the sports space, the websites and everything else that you've created. So Give me the origin story in English, though. In English, my Spanish <laughs> is okay. I know, I know you're working on it. So thank you for, for the invite and to everybody here in, in the finalist YouTube channel. How did I start? All right. So I got to Miami. I, I went to college in Kansas. I played baseball. So that's how I got here to the United States. But the way I started, I actually got here because of a job at a, in a radio station here locally. And then when they gave me the job, the first thing when they sat me down was, the first thing they told me was, you're not going to be doing any sports. You better be <laughs> ready because you're not going to be doing any sports. I'm like, okay. But we do have the South American Cup playing right now. And they had the the, the copyright, the rights to, to broadcast them in Spanish and all that. So I kind of started doing some of that uh, just on the social media side. Then this same group acquired ESPN Deportes Miami Radio. So we kind of started doing some stuff there as well. Uh, and on the other side, I was working on, on the Spanish side from, from back home. Uh, I own a website. So we, I mean, I've been doing blogs since I was in college. So I, I was writing back then a lot. Then I started writing articles, especially about baseball and, and soccer, which is uh, are the sports that I've been following uh, the longest time. So that's that's how I started. I had my own website in before I got here and before I graduated. And then when I got here to Miami, it was just, I mean, kind of, I'm lucky because the this this group bought this radio station and then we actually got to to work with ESPN Deportes Miami on the Spanish side and I think that's how how we met at the end mm -hmm. uh, because of Ricardo Montes de Oca uh, at that point so that's how I got here in into the sports arena here in Miami it kind and, of a summary what, and the website <laughs> uh, for for those who don't know it is sportsvenezuela.com correct yes 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 with, and with, it's with, mostly focused for for Venezuelan athletes uh, mm -hmm. or Venezuelan leagues in, in, in especially it, it's a very specific uh, target so it's, it's not as as broad as five reasons it, it's a, it's a different experience yeah and again there's a lot of folks that get into this in the niche angle and that is one yeah. niche angle but but you mentioned also you know on the Spanish language side uh, in particular when you were working for ESPN Deportes uh, that there are certain sports that obviously are going to resonate more with that community, baseball and soccer being primary, although it's a little different depending on the country. I think people assume, oh, Cuba, they love soccer. No, <laughs> they love baseball, right? <laughs> in, in, in Venezuela, it might be a little bit more on the baseball side than on the soccer yeah. side, uh, at least in terms of recent success. So I, I, I feel like uh, th there is this kind of monolith uh, in terms of the way that there's a perception of this when that's not actually the case. Okay, then uh, joined up with Five Reasons Sports, and, and you were doing a podcast called Cinco Rizonas. And, and I think this right. is an interesting place to start because I, I, I think that there is, as we talk about fanalists, um, you know, from different backgrounds here, I, I do think that there's a cultural difference that maybe we even came across with a podcast where maybe on the Spanish side, maybe not as familiar at this point, okay, going forward. What, what were some of the challenges that you found with that? And, and, and this is something that's still going on, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it uh, maybe later. Because, and, and talking about going back a little bit, uh, when I got here and when, when we started doing the ESPN report, Deportes Radio, the management told us, okay, I know we are in Miami, I know it's baseball, I know it's basketball, but people actually here fight a lot about Real Madrid and Barcelona. So that's mm -hmm. a rivalry that really fires up even Cubans. I mean, you, you said Cuba is not as good in, in or they, they, I mean, they're not as good in the national team side of soccer, but they mm -hmm. do follow a lot of 
uh, soccer here in Miami. And when you go uh, to parks and, and play soccer and stuff, you, you do see a lot of Cubans actually playing soccer and love soccer and follow Real Madrid and Cristiano and Messi and all of this uh, back and forth. And, and that went on for, for several years when I was there. But some of the challenges doing the podcast, I think our audience was still used to radio at some point mm -hmm. and to being served certain content at, at a certain time. And they were used to like the same characters talking about the same sports. Uh, I don't know. I, I, and I think they're still working on, on getting over that hump to, to really uh, consume more uh, podcasts in Spanish. That's been a challenge. I mean, I've been doing podcasts in Spanish for, for I mean, since I got here kind of like four or five years and, and still still struggling to really get to that audience. We know they are out there. We know that they, they want to consume more content because right now we don't have, I think we, we don't have any uh, radio stations in Spanish that talk about sports right now because mm -hmm. uh, what was ESPN Deportes Radio, they just shut it off and, and it's not going on anymore. So we know there's a lot of audience out there that want content, that want to consume content. They're just doing it somewhere else. And and that's that's something that that's kind of a challenge. And even for us in five reasons, that that could be a, another uh, public that we're still not getting. And, and that's it, it's not half of Miami, but it's a very big population that it's out there for 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 grabs <laughs> probably a conversation we'll have as soon as this episode yeah is yeah maybe, actually, maybe because <laughs> no it, because because I, I do think it's relevant and i think it ties in kind of as we're talking to fanalists here who are in this space who maybe you know maybe they are they they, they speak two languages uh you know they, they maybe were were born in another country and moved here or their second generation in this country but they still have a lot of ties to whatever community it is uh that is their background and maybe they're they're concerned about okay you know can I create content for both spaces and, and I think that's where we kind of go to you here because obviously at five reasons you mentioned you know your background primarily baseball uh, and soccer and you played baseball as I did um, probably I didn't play as high a level as you did since I didn't get a scholarship to Kansas <laughs> which position um, did you play uh, I, well I mean I kind of had a pop gun arm so I it was mostly second base although they they threw me out <laughs> in center sometimes but. Uh, you know, the wheels really weren't there. And then when I blew out my knee, they weren't there at all anymore. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, I, I think that obviously, as you recognize here, you know, we, even with five reasons that, you know, NBA and NFL are king down here, um, you know, with, with sort of, you know, with sort of the non Latino audience in particular, as you can see the two things that are behind you on the screen. Uh, and so it, it is, I think, for fanalists kind of finding, you know, what they're they're good at. And their niche, but also what the audience wants to consume. And you're part of our heat coverage, and and I think too we've seen that over just in Miami specifically that the the uh, the Latino audience down here in Miami, uh, you know, is very passionate about the Miami Heat. Yeah, uh, it, that's right. I mean, Ethan, the, the last time I went to FTX Arena, I sat mm -hmm. down with Joe Pujala, who does the mm -hmm. the broadcast in Spanish, and and he was part of the ESPN Deportes team, uh, the, the radio station as well. And we were talking about it, and it's it's unbelievable. Even from the the Miami Heat standpoint, they don't even create that much content in Spanish. So it's mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting how uh, not even from the team we're getting this type of content. And forget about radio stations. We know what's going on with radio stations. We see uh, right now what's going on in English. What's happening? Uh, what's happening in Spanish? Two or three years before, just radio stations mm -hmm. shutting down and journalists just getting. Uh, no place to go. So, so we've been experiencing that for a long time. But it's interesting that a, that a team that I mean, as open as the Miami Heat, still doesn't have any content. Not only in Spanish, because we have a, a very mm -hmm. diverse community here in South Florida. Even in Creole, they don't have right. content in Creole. So that's that's something that even the team can can get better at. And I don't know. It's I don't know what's going on, and, or if it's something that's coming up soon. But I was talking to him, and th th that's a big audience out there that is just, I mean, they're not getting any content from almost anybody. I, I feel like uh, the Heat, to a certain degree, may have taken that audience a little for granted of late. Whereas when you see, uh, you know, there's right here in, in Broward, where I am, and on 595, there's there's a Panther, Florida Panthers, best team in the league right now as we speak. Uh, you know, there there's a billboard, Vamos Gatos, uh, you know, right here, on 595 it feels like they're they're making an outreach because that typically hasn't been their audience whereas i i do think maybe at this point 
the Heat have grabbed some of that audience and perhaps they're taking it a little bit for granted. We've seen the Marlins go the opposite direction where they have made a full court press, uh, wrong sport, of course, but full court press uh, to to grab that audience. And I don't know that that's worked. And, and you and I have had many discussions about yeah, that they're also. They're playing the infill in. You can say that. They're playing the infill in with the <laughs> right. Latino community. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So I, I do think uh, to, to sort of bring all this back around, and then I want to talk about the YouTube uh, space a little bit. But yeah. I, I think what we've seen is that there is, for fanalists, uh, I think a market for content that that not only the, the the mainstream outlets are not creating, as you mentioned, uh, but also because, like you said, the radio stations are disappearing. The newspapers don't have the resources. I mean, the newspaper. I mean, the, the newspaper here in Fort Lauderdale doesn't even cover the Florida Panthers, literally down the street. Um, and, and but but I think it creates this audience for fanalists because they can create niche content that nobody else is. The question is, how big can it grow? So before we get to the YouTube channel. I mean, what is the upside? And if someone was to say, okay, I, I, I have you know background where I'm fluent in Spanish, uh, you know, I'm comfortable in English, but I'm, I'm fully fluent in Spanish, and I want to address that audience with Miami Heat content or with uh, Los Angeles Lakers content, maybe in, in, in LA or maybe Dallas Mavericks content. What is the best way in your view to go about that? Yeah, I think especially with those uh, big teams, I mean, the Dallas Mavericks, the Lakers, the Yankees. We have from, uh, some friends here that created a YouTube, uh, YouTube channel just talking about the Yankees. And, mm -hmm. I mean, they're doing really well. But, I mean, it's it's easier when it's the Yankees. It's easier mm -hmm. when it's the Lakers. It's it's harder when it's, I don't know, the Charlotte Hornets and you're trying to do uh, <laughs> content in Spanish. I mean, you have to find that audience. That's that's the main key. And maybe it's not even a, like, like if it's in Charlotte, it's not even a, a I mean, you, you better not do that. But but if, you, if you're here in Miami, if you're in Los Angeles, in, in, why not? Just jump out there, create your own YouTube channel, create your own podcast and, and try it out. I mean, start following people. And maybe and you talked about this second generation or even third generation of uh, migrants coming here. I mean, they want to also listen to some content in their own language i mean they have mm -hmm. two own languages but you know what i mean so why not i mean try it out what's the worst that can happen i mean the first thing if you enjoy it if you enjoy creating content that that's the main thing i mean just mm -hmm. go go for it enjoy what you're doing and you keep getting better at it. and as you grow your content is going to be getting better anyway so why not just go all right, let's get to the content that we've created at Five Reasons, uh, the YouTube channel, which was yeah. uh, was was really, in a lot of ways, your idea. You kind of pushed me over the edge on this one. <laughs> we had discussed doing a YouTube channel. Uh, we started at Five Reasons with a bunch of podcasts that you yeah. know, ultimately grew to 15 podcasts. And I found that managing and, and promoting 15 podcasts and finding sponsors for 15 podcasts was challenging, in part because of what we talked about earlier. There are some people who just are not accustomed yet to going to podcasts instead of radio. But a YouTube channel uh, is a little bit of a simpler enterprise because all the content goes in there kind of in one place. You can see it if you want to. I know some stuff we do with thumbnails. Uh, and now we've kind of grown now as we speak on the Five Reasons YouTube channel. We hope to do the same here with Fanalists that you know we're over 16,000 subscribers uh, and, and we have streaming shows and, and everything else along those lines. To a YouTube creator or producer, give me the number one best bit of advice. <laughs> well, first, a little bit of a background of on why I told you to do the YouTube channel. Like you said, when you started doing this this project, you thought it as a. I mean, we, we are a, a a network of podcasts, right? right. And then, I mean, it, it became a, a website. It became a, a YouTube uh, channel. So it, it 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 was a transformation of a company, right? And what I saw was, I mean, we're creating a lot of good content and there's, I mean, there's almost nothing about the Miami Heat or the Dolphins or the Marlins or or the Panthers or, or the Canes on YouTube, especially people actually watching the games and going to games and mm -hmm. really spending time and really analyzing the team and not just giving a two minute highlight and here, talk about this and that. So what it's. What I saw was, okay, we have a huge opportunity here to really get these people more and more content. Why? Because, yes, people like audio, but they also, I mean, most of the people are visual, especially mm -hmm. in sports. So, And 
Why not show that we're going to arenas? Why not show that we can analyze and do live opportunities and, and get the people also to see our faces and interact with us in a different way? And that's what we do all the time. I mean, you guys have a, a floor is yours. You guys have, I mean, we do the pregame, the postgame, when people actually get to talk to you in a sense, whereas when you're listening to a podcast, you don't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you enjoy it. You can maybe tweet at somebody or or I don't know, send him an email if you're a little bit more old school, whatever. But it, do, going live, you actually have that opportunity. And my experience was, especially from ESPN Deportes and, and, and the other radio station that I work with, was that going live, especially close to events before, even during events and or right after, just to talk about what just went on, really draw people's attention. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I wanted. I mean... Why not? People are craving content in those moments. They're either super happy. They're either super mad. They want to say something about what just went on and they want to hear you and, and even agree with you or disagree with you and tell you you're crazy, whatever, but they want you to be there. So that's, that, that was the main reason for the, for the YouTube channel. And my main advice, uh, I mean, uh, advice would be create content, especially uh, don't try to fool people. The sports fans are, I mean, they know their stuff. Mm -hmm. They know if you, if you watch the game, they know if you, if you're just talking just to talk, it's hard because especially nowadays with these national uh, channels, just, you notice when some analysts just, you're not watching my team. What are you talking about? You know, Jimmy Butler's name just because he's been all over the place and he, he has a name in the league, but you're not really spending time watching my team play mm -hmm. or, or and, and people notice and sports fans sometimes they know even more than us because they really spend time and that's part of their life and and that's really close to their heart so you have to be really careful and, and not trying to fool uh, sports fans because they really know what i mean about this subject a lot and, and what you're talking about too with the youtube stuff you know podcasts uh I'm, in my view, you know, started to replace radio because of yeah. the active experience of choosing the content that you want. Yeah. That's right. The one limitation of podcasts as compared to sports radio is that sports radio, typically a lot of hosts, although I didn't a lot when I was a host, but many did for years and years and years, took calls. Yeah. And in podcasts, you can't. It's just not an option. And <laughs> so essentially the YouTube channel well, blends both. It could be an option. We can talk about it. No, well, we'll I, talk about it after. But, right? but, yeah, no, you know but, what? That's it. This is going to end up becoming a five reasons planning <laughs> meeting. All right. No, follow the, the, him at Alejandro <laughs> BG32. Follow and also follow the five reasons YouTube channel and subscribe to this channel here, whether it's in Spanish, English, or anything else. Adios. <laughs>